Welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm Melissa, and if you're new here, welcome. And if you're joining me back for another video, thank you so much for coming back. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I would love to have you here. For today's video, we are briefly going to talk about anthurium pollination, and then I'm actually going to be taking you through the process of harvesting the seeds from the berries. I have successfully pollinated one of my anthurium hybrids, <laughs> and I'm just so excited. I did actually film this video late at night, but I just wanted to refilm part of this and kind of sit down and talk about the pollination aspect first. And then you guys will see live footage of me actually harvesting the berries and what I ended up doing with them and the plan for them. I also wanted to say I am no way an Ethereum expert. I feel like I know very little about the science behind it, but I'll just kind of explain and talk to you about what I know with Ethereums and how I got mine to pollinate and any tips and tricks I have, I will share those with you. The Ethereum that I am mostly gonna be talking about today is my Ethereum hybrid. It's the one that I did pollinate. Mine is a Crystallinum Magnificum. That is the hybrid plant that I crossed with an unknown Anthurium in my collection. I have it narrowed down to a few possible Anthuriums that had pollen at that time. It was either with my Clarinervium, my Dresserly, or my Pedato Radiatum. So it has to be one of those three. I will be having my own new little hybrid Anthurium, hopefully with all the seeds that I harvested. And I'm just so excited to see what happens. She has been with me in my collection for a really long time. She started as just a baby, tiny little seedling, so small. And I watched her grow up to be the big, beautiful Anthurium she is today. And I'm so very lucky she has done so well in my care. She is such an easygoing Anthurium, so happy. I feel like Anthuriums do take a little bit of time to grow and mature in order to get an inflorescence, which is their flower. So you'll notice when yours is growing, you'll see where the new leaf kind of comes out of the petiole at first. And then once it starts maturing, it'll have its own catafil that the new leaf will be growing out of. And then the inflorescence will kind of grow out of the petiole. And then the inflorescence, you'll notice it starting to get longer and longer once it forms off of the peduncle or petiole. It'll be covered at first with that spathe is what it's called. It's just like a protective layer. And then it slowly peels back and reveals the um, spadix, which is the flower part that grows the fluid and the pollen. And then it starts to change and you'll notice that stigmatic fluid first and then the pollen. And in order to cross the anthuriums, you need an inflorescence in two different phases. So the inflorescence, the flower, goes through a female phase first, which produces those little droplets that you see, the clear. It's actually called the stigmatic fluid. And it usually lasts for me, I feel like, not very long, maybe a week or so. Then you'll notice the pollen forming, and I feel like the pollen phase kind of lasts for a while. I've had pollen last for several weeks on some of my anthurium, even longer. The pollen is the male phase, so that inflorescence goes through the female phase first, then it moves through the male phase. Even if it was crossed, it'll still go through the male phase. So you can take an inflorescence that has pollen and rub the inflorescence together that has the stigmatic fluid. And that's basically what pollination is. You're just rubbing them together at the right time and hopes that it takes. And it's basically a waiting game, honestly. And not all Ethereums can cross with each other. And I don't really know much about like which kind of hybrids or which kind of Ethereums can cross with one another. I would probably just turn to the internet, Google search to see what kind of hybrids are out there to see what other people have crossed. And maybe there's some more like articles and stuff on Ethereum pollination. I honestly just got really lucky and mine just took. You can actually store pollen too if you have an inflorescence 
and you don't have another one that's receptive, once you have that pollen forming, you can actually take a paintbrush and paint the pollen off onto aluminum foil is what I see other people do. You want to seal it and stick it in your freezer so that it doesn't get any moisture. I've heard of other people suggesting to use like a little, you know those things that you get in a shoe box, those little, little moisture absorbing things, you can throw that in there. I've seen them wrap it in foil and then stick it in a Ziploc bag with the little moisture removing piece and then you can freeze it the pollen for up to six months i believe any other inflows i've had i've pretty much just let them go through their phases and then the inflorescence if it's not pollinated it slowly starts to yellow and die off i do have another anthurium in my collection currently that i have pollinated as well it is my Claire Nervium. I have two inflows on it that I possibly pollinated. So it's basically a waiting game. I do have one that looks like possible berries will be forming in some time. It's been about six months so far. And that's kind of the thing. You don't really know when berries will form. The thing that told me that I that it was successful is that the inflow didn't die. It basically stayed green. You kind of look at the little spikes on it and over time as months pass they'll start to form and change and kind of pop out a little bit more then they'll start to form berries when they're ready to be harvested you can kind of pick them off and then inside of the berries will be the little seeds and then once you have those seeds you can plant them and then grow your own baby anthurium the hybrid that i did cross that you guys will see I feel like only took maybe three to four months to get to the phase that it was at for the berries to be ready to be picked off. Whereas my Clarinervium, it's been six months and I don't even have berries yet. So I feel like some anthuriums can take even like a year to even show that it was successful for you to even get berries. If you notice it's starting to yellow off and die, then it didn't take, or maybe it just aborted the inflorescence because of something maybe with the care, maybe the environment changed, maybe it was getting underwatered, and maybe it just didn't have enough energy to keep the inflorescence alive, so it aborted it. So I feel like while you do have an inflorescence and it's active, and you're hoping to pollinate it, just make sure you're really good with your anthurium care, keeping it hydrated. They are very thirsty plants, especially when they are pushing new leaves. And you wanna make sure that you're feeding them with fertilizer and keeping the care environment optimal for their growth. So just try and keep them happy and growing well while they are blooming if you do want to pollinate them. I have heard the time of day can make a difference too. Like you wanna try and do it in the morning hours or evening hours compared to, um, like during the day, I guess they're more receptive during that time. So basically you can cross two together. If you can research if they can cross, that would be best first before you try it. And if you don't have, if you really wanna store the pollen, then you can freeze it. And if you have two that are, that one is receptive and you have pollen and you can rub them together and see what happens, that's kind of what I did with mine. So up next, you are gonna see the process of me harvesting the berries. And I was really excited to just do this process. Again, it was really late at night. I was super tired. I ended up getting 361 seeds. It was a lot. And I'm actually keeping them in my Ikea cabinet here and you guys will see that. So let's get started on harvesting these berries and I'm really excited. You can see I've already started picking a bunch off. I have a ton of seeds in here already. Look at all those. And I'm not even like a fourth of the way done picking. So the inflow here, I picked a lot of berries off here. I'm just like pulling them out and I still have so many berries. This thing is covered in them, but they come right out. So at first I wasn't sure how to like get them out but I feel like um, they've been ready to come out for a while. And then each little berry, I'm just gonna pop it down here. It'll have one or two or three seeds. I had one that had three, so that one had two. So I'm basically, I just keep taking them off and putting the seeds in here. I guess cause I just don't want them to completely dry up. So I'm like keeping them covered while I do this. Yeah, I'm just keep grabbing them. There's so many here. <laughs> I just kind of grab it with my thumb and pluck it off. And the berries like squish. 
so easily. I guess because they're ripe, they've been like ready to come off for a while. Hey, let me show you. So, yeah, they just come right out. It's hard to like scoop the berry up out of here sometimes. Okay, so that, that's the whole berry there, right there. And then if you rub, the little seed comes out. That one only had one. Ooh, that's a juicy one right there. All right, and that one had two that you can see. And then here, like the ones that are still in the berries, I just kind of roll them on the paper towel and they squeeze right out of there. You're just basically removing the outer shell. I have finished the berry picking. <laughs> I have so many berries here that I have picked and these are all the seeds that I have. There's so many, look at them all. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off because it's actually, it's starting to yellow a bit here and I had accidentally kind of kinked it here too. So I'll probably cut it off to about here and yeah, that'll be it and then I'm gonna, set up my prop station. I don't know where I put the rest of my containers because I have one that has like little pockets here with a humidity lid, but then I have two extra trays, but I don't know where, I don't know where I put the lid and the tray for the rest of them. So I have this little box or plastic container. I might just sit, one in here and put like maybe saran wrap and then get like a lid or something to sit this on. And that way two can kind of be covered. My goal is to kind of get them into two if I can, but if I feel like I put too many together, then I'll do a third one. So I'm gonna fill like each little pocket up with our moss, which is over here soaking. Ugh. I'm just gonna do moss for all of them. So yeah, I'm gonna get started on doing all this and we will get finishing up here. I'm thinking I might do like six or seven little seeds. I think I'm just gonna plop them down in here and then like cover with a little bit of moss, just like very loosely. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do seven and see how far that takes us. I might have to add more. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is gonna be very tedious, so I will um, skip this part. So basically, I'm just laying them down in there and then I'm gonna layer with a little bit more moss over top just so that all of them are kind of covered, if that makes sense. But it's just loosely packed. All right, so I'm gonna finish up and then I will let you know how many I ended up doing in each one and yeah. <laughs> We are done. It is almost two in the morning. <laughs> I have been playing with berries and seeds for the past, I don't know how long. I don't remember when I started, but let me show you what I have going on. All right, so we have our disaster over here. So I ended up placing all of the seeds into three containers. I was really trying to space them out more, but I don't really have anything else to use right now. And I feel like that's all I'm gonna do. So I ended up, guess how many seeds that I harvested from all the berries. I was honestly surprised by the number. 361. <laughs> if I counted right, I'm pretty sure I counted right, but roughly. I don't know how many will actually take and how many will grow, but we'll see. And you can kind of see some right here. So they're all down in the moss and I think I will make room in my Ikea cabinet real quick for them. I'm gonna try to. And I still haven't cut this envelope off yet. Let me actually go ahead and, oh, I got my shears. We're gonna say goodbye to it. I feel bad, but. All right, it's gone. Aww. R.I.P. and flow. All right, I'm gonna put her back in my plant room, clean up this mess, make room for those in my cabinet, and I will definitely keep you updated on them, and I'm excited. I actually need to label, um, I'm gonna label those to the date that I did this and what they are. That's one thing I forgot to mention when you are pollinating, make sure you put a label, I don't know, you can use like a piece of tape and wrap it around and put a label like what you tried to pollinate with it and the date, cause it's gonna save you so much headache in the future. Cause I didn't label mine and it was such a headache cause I don't remember exactly what I tried to cross with. Even if you don't think it's gonna work, just label it. Trust me, you will want to know. If it does work, you will want to know exactly what you crossed it with. So that's the only thing I wish I would have done differently. If I get some babies, we'll be able to see what they are. So yeah, uh, let me take you into my uh, plant room here. She is back in her spot and I put the babies, I made a little bit of room in my cabinet. I kind of squished the rest of the plants. But um, so I have one back there in the back and then kind of one up front here and then one there. And then I put a label of the date that I harvested them and I'm not sure exactly, like I said, what I crossed it with, but we'll see. And I like that they're in the cabinet so I can keep an eye on them and you know, just see how they're doing. But thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope it was somewhat educational or you learned something from this video. I'll definitely keep you updated on the process of these seeds and how they're growing. I did stuff quite a bit of seeds together, so I'm hoping to get another couple containers as to where I can separate them more because I have some containers that have like 12 to 15 seeds in one little pod and that's too much to keep together. So I will have to like get some other containers and separate them a bit more and make some more room for them. But right now I have them kind of crammed in my cabinet. It's really warm and humid. It's like 80 degrees and usually stays in the 70s for humidity and they're under really good light. So definitely have a place for them that is in that environment so that they can be encouraged to grow. But yeah, any new growth that I get, any kind of update, I will be sure I will do like an update video on them. I'm just really excited to see if I can grow my own anthurium and what the anthuriums are gonna look like. I know when they're small, it's kind of hard to tell the leaf shape and what they actually look like. 
but I'm just excited for the whole process. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you later.